Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jeremy, founder of QuickMail.io. And this is Jack, Chief Lead Generation Officer at SalesBread.com. Today, we got some yeah. teardowns. Teardown. Yeah, that's good. Right. Zoom we like, yeah, we, we almost got it. Yeah, we got four emails that we're going to be sharing, reviewing, and maybe editing. Um, two, funny okay. enough, there's some... Wistful Two. Yeah, two wistful ups. That's right. right. Two emails and two follow-ups. So yeah. we can see the next step because Jeremy and I uh, both didn't respond to our respective cold emailers. I did respond, right? but with a strange question. So I'll let you Ah, you did. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good I to know. By the way, if, if you do get a good cold email, you should resist from responding until you absolutely have to, because you may get, up. yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, all right. So just before we dive in, a quick word from our sponsors. Today, most B2B companies lack either the time or expertise, or maybe both to turn those cold prospects into warm leads. So at salesbread.com, we will bring you one lead per day using ultra personalized cold emails and LinkedIn messages. If you're interested, if you want to talk strategy, if you want to uh, find out how it is that we generate one lead per day, head over to salesbread.com slash contact and get in touch. Do it. Do it. Do it. Actually, just do wait. it right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait right until now. you do it. Yeah, that'll take about 30 seconds. So in the meantime, Jeremy, give us a pitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, the next sponsor is QuickMail.io, a fantastic tool when it comes to outreach by email. And uh, it's got great features. You can scale with inbox rotation. Pretty popular feature, actually. And uh, while, you know, staying flying under the radar. And we also got a great auto warmer. So put it in the oven, put your inbox in the oven, and then start scaling with inbox rotation. This is awesome. And to tell you that we are taking um, deliverability extremely seriously, we added just recently an experimental uh, button to actually send your text in or your email in just text, and it should help with deliverability. We're actually doing testes, and uh, I'll let you know on the cast because you know, that's who we are. Love it. Yep, we got some... Good data from Jeremy coming in soon. Uh, oh, thanks yeah. for that. Data Let's dive right in. in. Data episode. I can't wait. Okay. So Jeremy, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. You yeah. see the screen. We see the screen. Cool. So uh, I'll go ahead and read this cold email. This quick question about Salesbread. Hey, Jack, I just came across Salesbread and I really love what you guys have going on. Congrats on working with Avidon Health. I specialize in finding new clients for outbound lead gen agencies and help increase revenue. Can you handle another 30 plus appointments of clients in need of your outbound lead generation service? If so, I'd love to discuss our solutions with you. Thanks. Have an awesome day, Tim. Wow. Mm. Hey, um, <clears throat> uh, they mentioned something, uh, sales bread. What is it? Like, did you hear about that? <laughs> yep. That's the company name. In oh, fact, uh, we can point out another bracket here. Congrats on working with, and then they just dropped in uh, a logo from the website. Um, yeah, okay, what you make so, of that? right. So subject line checks out. Um, I really, man, I haven't used the quick question subject line in so long because I think it is played out and we may see a, a repeat of that in the next follow up, uh, you, you know, the next teardown. But. It's like, uh, it's like, um, elephant, uh, pants, you know, the, those things that were like out of fashion or like very fashionable ah, at right. some time becomes out of fashion and then it comes back That's again. Funny. I mean, it's kind of True. the same thing, you know, quick questions. Sure. But I did open it. Um, oh, there you go. And then, okay, so just really quickly, because the reality is, I think they had just enough personalization to get through to the pitch. And the pitch was something different. Um, let's tackle personalization. If they didn't mention a client here, and they just said, I came across sales bread and love with you have going on, I would have said like, full stop, this is terrible. Because they dropped in a company, uh, okay, whatever. It's not great, but mm -mm -mm. I, 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 it's neutral. W would you kind of say something similar? Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, okay. There is actually a, a one personalization I really like. I, I'm curious to see if it will be, uh, it will be the same as mine, but yeah, carry on. Mm. Okay, cool. So then here's where it gets interesting. I specialize in finding new clients for outbound lead generation agencies and help increase revenue. We've talked about this before, um, 
we've thrown in lines of like my company is focused on or yeah. right now our priority is and yeah. then whatever you say has to be very closely tied to the recipient and in this case it is that's that's great i i read the next line after this it's like oh okay cool and then let's carry in can you handle another 30 plus appointments of clients in need of your outbound lead generation service and on one side it lost me because this isn't a pain point. Um, on the other hand, if let's say we were just starting and we were really looking for clients, I, I think that's interesting. Um, is it believable? Um, I, it's on the cusp of not being believable, right? I think if they would have dialed it back a little bit, yeah. um, I may have accepted it quicker, but I think this is a strong offer and for the right person, it may have inspired a conversation. Um, it just wasn't a match with what we need right now, but I actually thought there was something good going on here, which is nice because they kind of do cold email lead generation for cold email agencies. So you, you better yeah, funny, have something it? going on. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's something we should talk about. <laughs> like, it, Maybe they went after a different type of industry and your industry was lead generation agency. You know what I mean? If you told me like, hey, Jack, come into business with me. I'm going to offer SEO services to SEO agencies. Mm -hmm. Oh, what kind of hell is that? You know, uh, it's weird, right? It's a, it's a little strange. But whatever. Uh, maybe, right? Mm hmm. Uh, what do you have on these two sentences so, here, Jeremy? So what I really love is that, hold on, where is it? Ta -ta 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 -ta. Uh, I specialize finding new. Yes, that's what I like as well. Like I specialize finding new clients for, and then that's you, mm -hmm. at bond mm -hmm. generation agency. So I think it was like a nice little thing. So it's like I specialize in finding new clients, but just for you, you guys, right? So what, what you are. So it could be a merch tag. Like outbound lead generation agencies, that right. could be a merge tag, and then in this case, right. it kind of make more sense. But although that, it's I find that very nice. The thing I do agree with you: thirty plus appointment. It's like, how do you back it up? That's my first point. And uh -huh. I would have loved to see the next line being, you know, for example, we or like there you go. Lastly, we helped you know ABC you come to generate seventy appointments. You know, pretty cool. And then the second thing is the time. So. Can you handle another 30 plus appointment over the next four weeks or some like sometimes or like per week, even like per week? Yeah. Can you handle another seven appointments per week? Right. Clients, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then you say, uh, you know, like uh, all latest clients, ABC Inc., you know, manage mm. to get more than 20, you know, per week. And yeah. then I think it's missing the CTA. That's that's the sort of thing that I would say uh, could have been in yeah. time. Uh, backing it up and then having a proper CTA. But other than that, until there, it's pretty good, honestly. Yeah. It's much so, better than what we receive. I I agree. The, just to round this out, the ending is Man. feels a little bit out of order. It, it finishes with, if so, I'd love to discuss the solutions. Thanks. Have an awesome day. I Yeah, I don't, I would no be tempted to ax it. Yeah, like. No value. If I say yes, I know there's more coming after that. So let's leave that off, right? Yeah. I would ask that. Um, Follow-ups worth checking out. Are we ready to move on? Yep, let's do it. Okay. Well, what kind of CTA would you have added at this point, by the way? Obviously, we need to play with a CTA and do an A-B testing. Yeah, on. Which one would so check it out. Please? I would cut off the two lines below it that didn't add anything. I would maybe drop this down. 20 to either 15 or okay 15 per week these are meaningful accounts too like yeah it, accounts it isn't just like grab just tack on 30 clients and nothing changes like that i got 30 significant work. clients do you want them <laughs> right so it's so let's drop it down to 15 and then like you said at a time frame could you handle another 15 appointments in the next six weeks yes brilliant okay and, that's, and then that would have been touch one. Should we move on to touch two? Yep. Okay. Love it. Tempted to add like a quick aside here. I was doing a cold email campaign to, um, let's say like home service type businesses. 
And there's a particular appliance that's like extremely high end and it actually costs the most to repair. Mm -hmm. So uh, my client knew what that was. And so like we tried a one line email that said, hey, do you guys, can you handle a few more brand repairs this month? Um, and then like said, like we may be able to send you a few customers your way as a kind of an opener. It worked really well, but um, I think that's kind of the same approach here. Anyways, yeah, yeah, let's sure. check out. Let's check out the follow-up. Says, hey, Jack, sent an email last week, but didn't hear back from you. It's giving us a bump. Here's a, re here's a quick recap of what we'll do. We'll generate leads of your ideal clients and give you cold email outreach script that gets you booked meetings. For every 50 cold emails sent to your ideal clients that are interested in your service, you should get two to three booked meetings using my cold email template. Would you like me to send you a video proof showing you a breakdown of how effective our results are? Um, weird. Whoa. You know, like, it's, it's so strange to be offering this to a cold email agency. So it tells me maybe they didn't know what we offer. Um, I think there's more to that. It's, it's like, first they, 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 they pitch you to give you some leads. And then after that, they pivot to, I'm giving you a script. A script, it's yeah. Like, what, what, what was that? And then the other thing is, if you take this CTA, would you like me to send you a video proof or like a breakdown of how effective our results are? take the CTA and you put it on the first email. I think it's brilliant because then in this case, you don't need to actually yeah. give, you know, we've been doing that for ABC, D, there you and, go. Uh, a, you know, XYZ company. You could just right. say like, hey, would you want me to send you a video to show you proof of what we've done for past clients? Ooh, That's right. Be like very powerful. Even better. Even better. Okay. So let's so say Scammy there's now. like two. Yeah, there's two things. One is like the offering feels like it did not match. It did not line up. Um, yeah. It also changed from email to email, which we've never recommended after how many teardowns, hundreds, or maybe not hundreds, but um, oh, no, 400 episodes or 200. Yeah. Uh, that's too much. <laughs> Probably so, 50. <laughs> yeah. If anything, just change what your benefit or what your social proof is being offered, your call to action, but don't change the actual thing you're trying to sell. So that's the big one. Yeah, I, I was thinking that this follow-up would actually show me the proof that they did it already in the past with a different client. You know, I feel like, oh man, they're doing that. That's great. Nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got it. Um, okay, so just looking over, any other notes from you on this, Jeremy? Well, let me quickly scan. Um, I said, oh, the first line makes me vomit already. I sent an email last week, but didn't hear back from you. Like, yeah. So giving this a bump, it's like, oh man, so selfish. Like get uh -huh. out of my, get how, out of my emails, how's... right? Yeah. Here's a quick recap of what we'll do. Just in case you're too stupid to actually remember it and uh, reply to me on time. It's like, <laughs> this uh... is true line. That's what that means. Like, yeah. all right, dude, I, uh, I had other priorities than pleasing you. And uh, I'm not dumb. I just decided not to, you know, reply to your stuff. So Okay, let me read the next. We generate leads for, of your ideal client and give you... It's like, yeah, that's kind of like odds. It could have just... I don't know. Why they, it's like, it's a recap, but it's not a recap. It's actually something else. Like, what? Right. <laughs> so I don't get it. Yeah, no. Yeah. Nah, doesn't check. I'm sorry. The first one was pretty good, but the follow-up is like WTF, right? Yeah, I agree. Okay, let's check out uh, some cold emails from your side, Jeremy. The subject yeah. line is uh, pretty similar here. Quick idea for quick mail compared to quick question for sales bread. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's check it out. It says, hey, Jeremy, love that you're helping agency owners scale their biz from zero to seven figs every month. You're helping so many founders realize their dreams. I've got massive respect for what you're doing. I actually just put together a guide with 25 email templates B2B SaaS companies can use to get more leads, book more demos and convert more trials. Would you like me to send you the PDF? Love to hear your thoughts. Okay. What are your thoughts? Well, you have to give me your thoughts because yeah. that's my cold email I received. Yep, <laughs> fair. Okay, so here's what's going on here. We've got someone that clearly has done their homework on quick mail. Yep. Check one. Uh, definitely gets me to read with interest uh, the next line. 
putting together a guide with 25 email templates SaaS companies can use to get more leads. And then it's missing something, Jeremy. It's like, okay, great. So what? Yeah. Um, it's missing, especially because the first line talks about helping agency owners scale. Exactly. There's no connection to the B2B SaaS benefit. Now, don't get me wrong. This can be valuable, but don't leave it up to your, well, email Prospect, recipients to yeah. figure out. Mm. Yeah, I might say- Why should I bridge it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I might say, even without changing anything other than adding a, a simple line here, um, we might say like, it's similar to, I don't know, a piece of content you've already done, mm -hmm. similar to X, Y, Z, but uh, readers looking, or maybe we should say who your readers are. Um, readers, or let's say agency owners looking for X, Y, uh, mm -hmm. looking for more tips for their own SaaS clients, for example. There you go. That's what I would have done. I would have said, um, should be especially worthwhile for any uh, website visitor that runs an agency and um, does stuff on behalf of their B2B SaaS clients should be useful for them. So you might even like reframe it so that it's like 25 email templates that um, cold email agencies can use to power campaigns for B2B SaaS companies, you know, or, or just call, call out which kind of reader would get what benefit. Does that make sense? It does. I'm also thinking that he could basically frame it into my own benefits in terms of like saying like, I'm happy for you to redistribute it to your to your, um, you know, to your audience. Or I think I put together a guide of 25 emails that I think could benefit to your audience, you know, if you, if you share it with them or stuff like that. But here's the thing that goes in my head is like, what's the catch? So right. a PS with a full disclaimer would have really helped here because here I feel like there's a string attached. I don't know where it's coming from. And suddenly it makes the whole congrats and, you know, got massive respect for what you're doing. Suddenly like, boom. You know what I mean? Right. And so right. it's like, it's almost like too good to be true. It's not like, hey, um, as a thank you for having provided me so much value, I'd like you to, it's not that. So it's like, there is, there is an agenda here. I'm not sure which one it is. And to me, that's okay. like, I'm not sure if I should reply or not. Like the first line, I think like, I received some sort of emails like that. They're like genuine, you know, compliments and thank you notes from founders who actually yeah. benefited from my advice. And I'm like, that's right. cool. That's really cool. I love that. And so on. Right. But here, so the intro is great, but it's like, now I'm not sure anymore. Right. It's a shame. Connect the dots. Mm -hmm. Right. I like, I would have preferred like a bit more straightforward, like upfront, because would you like me to send you the PDF? That's like, yes. What the catch? He could just say like, the only thing I ask in exchange is that you share the thoughts, you know, how good do you think they are with me? Mm -hmm. and I'll be like, okay, that's a fair exchange. There is a trade. I understand. Love sure. to hear your thoughts is not quite the exchange that you ask. Maybe we could go a little bit deeper here because we've talked about being upfront with people. Yeah. But from this specific example, what's the hesitation? Is it um, you are curious what it looks like? However, you don't necessarily know what the ask is going to be and you'll yeah. feel like you owe it to this person? Yeah. Exactly. So we don't actually take it. Okay. And I didn't. Um, so then let's carry on. Let's check out the last uh, email for this Teardown episode. We've got a follow up to this um, quick idea for quick mail. We're ready to move on? Yeah, we are. Okay. Let's check it out. So, Jeremy, were you interested in that guide I mentioned a few days ago? Tyler, P.S. So grateful I stumbled upon Quick Mail. You guys keep sharing a ton of value to help agencies and small business owners fly. I'd love to, I'd love to be this helpful when I reach the top one day. Okay, help me out. Like, what's what's this here? What do you mean by what's this here? Well, <laughs> this email, did this so... change anything? No, it doesn't. There's nothing. So it's safe like to the say this is a flattery again. Like I, I wouldn't say I'm immune to flattery because no one really is. But I yeah. like to say that if you want to be able to ignore the insults or whatever, you have to be also able to ignore the, you know, the flattery and, and the whole the, the nice words. So if you remove all of that, you're not left with a lot of things, really, honestly. Yeah. And so 
you know, would you be interested in that guy? If I was, I would have replied, you know, on the first one. So there is something else here, the problem. And the problem is not more flattery. You know what I mean? It's like flattery well is said. not what actually move me into action here. So you need to provide me something else, which means addressing silent objections, right? And silent objection is like, it's simple. It's like, what's the catch? Where is the string? And I don't know it. And so therefore I won't reply, right? That's well does said. That, so a hundred percent. So it's like more personalization will not save a, a lack of, yeah, just, absolutely. Yeah. An, an objection. Mm -hmm. I wonder if this campaign failed because of lack of clarity more than anything. It's like, all right, I know you have a PDF, but like, that's yeah. all I know. And it doesn't necessarily tell me how I'm going to directly benefit. And also where you come in on this, right? Like, there's so much personalization that they may have been able to get away with something like, I'm just a huge fan of quick mail decide, you know, normally I, I only give this uh, guide to my email subscribers, but I want you guys to have it, give it away or whatever. Like, it's just something I would like to contribute. Would that have changed your mind? I'd be still wondering like, what is your benefit in this, in this case, right? And for me, for me, right. it needs to be a transaction. It needs to be a transaction. It needs to be, I give you something, I want something that is in exchange. And then it's up to me to value the deal. But here there is no deal. And I, if I don't know one side of the deal, I'm like, ah, there's something here, right? I like that. And I think yeah. like it does, it does come disingenuous, specials. it comes with a lot of flattery and it gives a thing, but it doesn't actually come up front into, well, this is what I want in exchange. It could well be, you know, it could be like something like PS. I'll, I'll tell you that. I send you this email and I say, PS, no string attached, Jeremy. I just want to make the world a better place or I just want this to be shared to more people, right? But at least it will be like coming up front. It's like I'm not expecting anything in exchange, right? And so I think this mm -hmm. is the not coming up up front that is, that is causing the disingenuity sort of like feeling. Yeah, I like that. It's, um, it's making me think about the story where um, somebody went to the street corner and tried to give away $20 and it took 10 minutes. <laughs> Excuse me, can I give you $20? I, I have $20. Uh, I want to give it to you, sir. Come here, I'll give you $20. Like, people are skeptical. That's yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah, exactly, it, exactly. Like, try, yeah, I give you a stack of bills and then you, you have to get rid of them by, you know, without asking something else in exchange. So, people so are here's the suspicious. Like, what's I love what's it. Still here? it so the good news is not only can you tell people what's in it for you, but you should tell people what's in it for you as well That's so right. that they have the whole picture, more clarity, and also um, they're less skeptical. That's right. In fact, we did it in, our, in one of our recent campaigns and it works fantastically well. And we actually get away with deals that I wouldn't think was possible. Like we say, like, uh -huh. You know, we just basically say like, um, hey, um, um, <clears throat> would you like us to do something for you? And then yes. I just in PS, I say, well, here's the full disclosure. The only thing we ask in exchange is this. Right. right. And then people right. are like, okay. They, I think they like the honesty. Like this is what we propose. And what we do ask that. And for us, it's a little thing. It may not be a little thing for them. Or it may be, right. but at least, you know, I'm setting up the terms of the deal. And if they have yes. to it, which a lot of people are actually, then it helps us, you know, tremendously because they perceive the value and we also have the value and they know the, the deal. They know it's not going to be like so tricked, funny. Tricked, yeah. Cornered, you know, those sort of things. You know, I'm, I'm thinking this is right here. You know, this email, these two emails that we just did a teardown is 180 opposite from the typical backlink uh, cold email that just says, hey, would you please put a link to this uh, page on this article where it does nothing but ask for something in return. This fails to do the ask entirely. And it just says like nice pleasantries yeah, offers. This. Yeah. And they both don't work. You That's need right. both the ask and the give right. to make it a nice cold email. Um, what, what he did super yeah. well and like the personalization spot on what what else can you actually say that, that's that's genuine even like like you say someone right. did their research that's good but that's not enough there's something else don't be afraid to ask okay uh, cool i love that takeaway
Uh, anything else here, Jeremy? Yes, I actually did reply to the second one. Um, okay. Can you guess what I replied? What's the catch? <laughs> That should have been my reply. In fact, I just asked them like, what's a cool email outreach tool have you been using? But the question was basically, you know, did you actually write this email or did you actually automate it? Um, the answer uh -huh. is he automated it. And at the end, he actually did ask me what he really wanted in exchange by that reply. It's like, you could have saved us a, a bit of time and you could have just, you know, told me anyway. That's no kidding. There's... So, all right. So this is what custom intro and then Brilliant. custom PS. Uh, it's too much the custom PS. It's then it's enough. I know you've done your, your, your research already. Yeah. Like you don't need to prove me you're doing research. Like more personalization won't help you. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I love it. Hey, this is a, a, a lot of good takeaways here. I'll wrap up unless you have anything else. Um, we can, mentioned course.quickma.io for more. This is kind of just the, the fun teardown. If you want the eight modules uh, taking you from, well, getting your feet wet in cold email to coming out of it, running campaigns like an agency, course.quickma.io will take you there. Um, that's it for me. Yeah, you can stop sharing. Cool. And uh, I can make the, uh, the last... Um comments if you want more like that you can go to course.quickmail.io <laughs> anyway well i'm kidding all right <laughs> great to see you guys um go keep on. it up um i know you guys love it um keep sending us emails if you just want to say a thanks and um don't forget the ask all right <laughs> don't forget the ask absolutely all right jeremy have a good one see you next time thanks bye okay.